right, all right, I get it. During my episode about Luke Cage's skin strength, I made a little rant about how werewolves annoy me and you all ended up commenting and tweeting more about that than the actual episode. So, with Halloween right around the corner, let's see if we can find ourselves some werewolves using science. The belief in werewolves has been with us for literally thousands of years, and what a werewolf is has shifted tremendously over that time. However, starting in the early 20th century, the notion that the light of a full moon is what triggered transformation became the accepted canon. And this is what I had a problem with during my rant. To me, my problem with lycanthropy is that the moon is always all there. It's always technically full. The only thing that changes is the amount of surface illuminated, but I see everyone's point that the amount of light matters, especially the light from a full moon. So, how much light does a full moon put out, and can we use that fact to science fictional creatures? Yes. First and foremost, moonlight, at least the kind that we can see, is just reflected sunlight. The moon doesn't produce any visible light of its own. And even though moonlight may look more bluish than regular sunlight, that's only because of something called the Purkinje effect, which is where our light sensitivity in our eyes shifts towards the blue end of the spectrum in low light conditions. In reality, moonlight is just weak sunlight. And just how weak? The moon shines because it has a weak albedo, or reflection coefficient. So, for all of the sunlight that makes a moon full or not, only 12% of that is reflected light from the sun. If the light that transforms a werewolf is 12% of the sunlight hitting a moon-sized and reflective thing, then we can figure out the properties of light needed to hunt the beasts. The total amount of light that a source puts out is called its luminosity. No, not that brain training company with games that don't actually work, measured in lumens. But how bright something is, is how much of that luminosity our eyes receive, called lux, measured in lumens per square meter. Think of the difference between these two variables like this. A light bulb puts out a certain amount of light in all directions, but as you move further away from the point source for the light, this sphere expands so that at the end, there is actually more area to illuminate. A light bulb is brighter here than here. This relationship is described by the inverse square law, which describes how everything from light to sound to gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. This is the math that will allow us to find werewolves day or night. We know what the brightness or lux of a full moon is, so all we have to do is determine the distance at which sunlight mimics moonlight, and then we'll have a werewolf detector. On a perfectly clear night, the brightness of the full moon is around one lux. So that's the amount of moonlight we're gonna want to werewolf check someone with. Here's how you do it. First, get a mirror that is one meter on each side. We want a mirror because we want sunlight, because that's what moonlight is. Then wait until your potential werewolf is in direct sunlight. Then, using the inverse square law, solve for distance. If the sun in direct sunlight has around 100,000 lux and shining on one square meter, we want that to be one lux of sunlight on a werewolf's face at a distance of 89 meters, or around 300 feet. In theory, in, in my theory, if you shine this amount of sunlight on a werewolf at this distance, they should start turning. But, I hear you saying, the light from the full moon it must be different than sunlight, right? Well, not really. The spectrum of visible light coming from both moonlight and sunlight is basically identical, and remember, werewolves do have to see the light, so it is visible, and when we measure albedo, we assume that the incoming light is the same as the outgoing light, not changed in some special wolven way. So, if it is the specific properties of moonlight that change lycanthropes, then, in theory, you could take a one square meter mirror and start shining daylight into strangers' faces 89 meters away to check if they're werewolves, and you will be able to tell if they are or not. That is just safe, scientifically reasonable advice. Not some weird calculation that a nerd spent a couple days doing. 
Every good werewolf hunter needs a giant mirror in her arsenal right next to the silver bullets. Because science. If you're willing to accept my calculations in this episode, and also willing to accept that maybe a flashlight has similar properties in its light to sunlight, then you could shine a common flashlight on a potential werewolf at around four meters or 13 feet away, and they should also change. 